Are you trying to create your own Chibi model from scratch but don't know where to start? In this video, I'll guide you step by step through the entire modeling process to help you build your character from the ground up. This is just the first part of a three-part series. The second video will cover UV mapping and texturing. The third will focus on rigging. By the end of the series, you'll be able to model, texture, and animate your very own Chibi character completely on your own. If you'd like to support the channel, leave a like, it really helps a lot. Before we get started, it's important to have a clear idea of what kind of chibi you want to create. Let's take a quick look. Super deformed, this style features a very large head, making up about half of the character's total height. It creates an ultra cute, exaggerated look, with head and body in almost equal proportion. Classic chibi style, a more balanced look, where the head is roughly one third to one quarter the size of the body. This is the most popular and recognizable chibi style. Stylized mini chibi, this version has a taller body, about four heads high. It's slightly more proportionate, but still maintains that signature cute appeal. In this video, we'll be working with a chibi that's around two and a half heads tall, a nice balance between cuteness and ease of animation. I quickly put together the reference images myself. I know some of you can be a little lazy, so I'm showing them on screen right now. Just take a screenshot and use them as your guide. All right, now that we have everything we need, let's get started on creating our model. For the head, we start by adding a cube. Then we divide it in half using Control plus two, convert it to a mesh, and finally add the mirror modifier. At this point, we can switch to sculpt mode and begin shaping the head. First, we place a guideline to mark the chin, then extrude the faces. We return to sculpt mode to smooth and refine the shape until we're happy with the base. Once satisfied, we separate the vertex that will serve as the nose reference and add an edge loop. The exact method isn't crucial here, what matters is creating a clean geometry that will allow us to make shape keys without unwanted deformations. Throughout the modeling process, feel free to add more edge loops and use the knife tool, especially where you need to increase geometry density, like around the mouth area. Next, we continue with some extrusion and use the grab tool in sculpt mode to adjust the shapes. Now it's time to create the eyes. Simply add an extra edge loop, use the insert face tool, and then round the faces with the loop tools plugin. If you don't see loop tools, check the add-ons section in older versions, or get it from the extensions menu in newer Blender versions. To help match the mesh to the reference, you can hide any geometry you don't need at the moment. For the neck, we use the same method as for the eyes. Going back to the mouth, we create the inner part by extruding along the y-axis and using the grab tool or various brushes in sculpt mode to get the desired shape. Finally, all that's left are the ears, which we model using the same techniques we've already used, extrude, edge loops, grab, and so on. For the body, we start by adding two new circles, each with eight vertices. We'll scale and position one at hip level and the other at shoulder level. Next, we join everything to the head mesh. 
We begin by connecting the lower circles, then extrude them upward. We'll come back to this part later, for now, let's focus on the legs. We extrude the legs while keeping the circular shape, then close the mesh to form the base, the heel area. At this stage, we align the legs with the reference image. This brings us to a key point for animation, the knee. It's important to create enough geometry and do it correctly to avoid strange or exaggerated deformations during rigging. The method I'm showing here is the simplest, fastest, and most beginner-friendly approach. Once that's done, we can go back to extruding, modeling, and sculpting the rest of the body. There's no need to be too precise here. The main thing is to keep the mesh clean, especially around the neck area, and to leave an opening where the arms will be connected. Now for the arms, we extrude them just like we did with the legs, and we'll use the same technique we used for the knee to model the elbow. This part of the process can take some time, it's all about shaping the mesh to your liking. We'll add extra geometry in areas like the glutes and chest as needed. It may take a lot of time, or just a little, depending on your experience level. What matters most is not giving up. As they say, trust the process. Now it's time for the part that many people consider the most annoying, the hands. But since we're working on a stylized Chibai model, luckily, it's not going to be too complicated. In fact, some artists skip modeling full fingers entirely and just suggest the shape of a hand. But we are brave, we're going to model all the fingers. First, we use the end of the arm to extrude the back of the hand. For the fingers, I chose to work with low geometry. This can be a bit tricky, so it's really up to you. You can use a circle with four or eight vertices. If you go with eight, you'll need to reduce the geometry carefully. In the video, I'll show you how to do it with just four vertices. All we need to do is extrude the circle to create a slightly curved cylinder, one that bends where the finger would naturally flex. Once you have one finger, just copy and paste it until you have four, and then merge them together.
For the thumb, it's a bit different. We create some extrusions directly from the palm, then shape them into a curved cylinder just like the other fingers. After that, it's mostly about sculpting and refining until we get the look we want. As for the feet, there's nothing special here, just a small extrusion outward. In this case, they're extremely stylized, so we keep it simple. We've finally reached the final phase of our Chibai model, where we'll be adding the finishing touches, the eye socket, tongue, eyelashes, eyebrows, and other small details that really bring everything together. To create the eye socket, just use a couple of extrusions and close the mesh. For the tongue, we start with a simple cube and apply a subdivision surface modifier. Then we shape it with a couple of edge loops, minimal geometry, but enough to get the job done. After that, we'll add a subdivision surface to the entire model. Now is the time to really focus on the shape, the details, and the overall feel you want. This is your final sculpting phase, the one that will breathe life into your finished mesh. As always, take your time. How long it takes will depend on your experience level. Once you're happy with the sculpt, apply Shade Smooth and start working on the final details like eyelashes, eyebrows, and the eyes. For the eyelashes, select the outer edges of the eye, duplicate them, and separate them into a new mesh. Then, position and shape them using a few extrusions and, of course, a bit of patience. But if you've made it this far, patience shouldn't be a problem. For the eyebrows, we'll do something similar. Select the faces, separate them, and then use Grab in Sculpt mode to shape them into place.
I also added a small line art element here. You can draw it by hand if you like, but I prefer keeping it as a separate mesh for flexibility. Totally up to you. Now for the eye itself, this part is super simple. Just add a circle with around 12 vertices, scale it on the z-axis, close the mesh, and create a small indent followed by a slight extrusion to give it some depth. You can skip the extrusion if you prefer a flat look, I just like the added volume. Next, we decide how to handle the light reflections. You can either paint them during the texturing phase or use a separate rounded mesh. I went with the mesh version for more control and to save time later. Always remember, in 3D modeling, a solid base will save you a lot of time down the line, so invest in building things the right way from the start. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you've completed your Chibai character model. But maybe you're wondering, what if I want to make a male version? No problem, let's see how to do it in under a minute. First, duplicate your model, enter edit mode, delete the chest faces, and close the mesh using fewer edge loops. Now, simply remove the slight chest bulge and add a softer shape a little lower. That's pretty much it. There aren't many major differences between male and female Chibai models. So we're done for today. Thanks so much for watching and sticking with me until the end. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode, where we'll dive into UV mapping and texturing.